dollars a month. Um, but, Comes down the price sometimes. She just sounds right. like. But honest to God, Eddie, like, like things like you know, when it comes to systems like that, I just tell people like make it make a choice and just kind of go. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, make yeah, you know, just. You'll spend time trying to figure out, oh, is this one better than that one? Or is that, that, that? Yeah, it's like, stop talking about it, be about it. <laughs> well, it's just because all those systems work, right? I yeah, mean, I got you. You know, so, um, but I think that's one of the big pros with like batch driven, right? Is it's all integrated um, with the other batch uh, systems that they offer, like the batch okay. dialer, the batch skip tracing, you know? Because I was so, just going to really download it to like, um, you know, Mojo and, and take it from there. But yeah. So I just yeah. needed something when I was out that was convenient to jot down the address, take the picture and keep it moving. Yeah, totally. And I mean, dude, you could go and I mean, why don't you just go? And if you want to, if you're curious what each of them kind of offer, you go and get the free trials for every single one. Right. Right. Um, right. You could spend a whole month just doing the free trials of batch driven um, deal machine and prop stream, you know? OK. Right, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll do that. Just yeah, wanted I mean, to get a little bit of advice. Like I said, something I was about to do. So just yeah. wanted to kick it with somebody that was pretty knowledgeable on whatever. Yeah. So, but like I said, yeah, you, what you're saying makes sense. All that stuff is pretty much the same. You just got to jump in and then make it happen. Yeah, because they all offer just about this, like deal machine and batch driven and prop stream are all about the same, you know, as mm -hmm. far as the features go. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's really just going to be picking your poison. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's good, man. Oh, dude, we got a one guy in the office, Carson Whaley. He's absolutely murdering it with Driving for Dollars. I think Driving for Dollars really, really slept on. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I was looking at um one of them videos from one of them, you know, gurus or whatever. Um, the TTP TTP guy, Brandon and he Daniels. was saying that his people, you know, basically he gets three hundred uh, for every three hundred driving for dollar addresses he gets he he basically gets a deal from that yeah you know, at least one deal i believe it yeah i believe it that's really good metrics too um for every 300 like that that's awesome so yeah so i would say get after it man for sure okay what else did you have any other questions in mind um now you you pretty much answered the mom so so what's your main um marketing or whatever avenue nowadays because i know you say you got rid of your cold callers a couple weeks ago or something last time i heard yeah so i am focusing primarily on ppc google adwords okay um so i'm going that route which is like a total 180 for what i've been doing um yeah. i still cold call them but my prior primary marketing spend is is going into google ads and then okay. to, to supplement between getting the google uh on um, leads from the google ads I cold called in between. And so I'm just really lean down right now um, until I decide to rebuild again. And the next time I'm just going to rebuild slower and focus on quality as opposed to quantity when it right. comes to bringing people on and just doing a better job of managing people as well. But yeah, it's yeah. tough. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I just want, you know, and a lot less overhead too, because. I mean, man, it gets, you know, they say cold calling is expensive. When you scale it, it's not expensive, you know, it's not inexpensive. Like it's, you know, it gets, it gets just as expensive as all the other marketing streams, you know, when you're paying for, for plus people, um, right. plus the list, plus the dialers, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it adds up. Um, but uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm going the PPC AdWords route, which has been paying off pretty decent for me um i've only been doing it for two months and i'm already operating at getting one deal for every eight leads which is pretty good Sweet. yeah so um are you all good. over the place with the leads is it, can you narrow it pretty sporadic i mean yeah you can um and some people do but to get um you know your cost per click and cost per lead down um some guy's strategy is to market to an entire state and that's what i do as i market okay. to an entire but i was confident in doing that because i'm such a big believer in squatting up like we always talk about on these zooms makes sense i have a net you know i'm able to network with people like for instance i locked up a deal in sparta michigan mm -hmm. which is i don't know if you know where that is but it's in kent county it's towards grand rapids okay and i was like i was like oh this is a throwaway deal like 
this is just one of those throwaway leads that I'm not gonna be able to convert because it was like a, it's like a two acre lot with like a pole barn and like a beat up modular home on it. But I thought it was like, well, you know what? I squatted up in the past with this guy out in uh, Grand Rapids. I was like, I'll just shoot it to him. It's like, hey man, do you think you could do anything with this? And the next thing I know, that day he got it sold. So I turned to like what I thought was a dead lead into, I mean, it's gonna be a pretty big payout. Sweet. Um, just from Congrats. squatting up and knowing for somebody. Yeah, so thanks. So, um, so yeah, but don't get me wrong. Just like with any marketing stream, right? PPC, you're still going to get like those throwaway leads, right? Just those leads that you're not going to be able to convert. So, but mm -hmm. um, the, the people that, that do stick or whatever, the good ones that do come through are they're pretty motivated. So um, there's definitely an extra level of motivation when you've got someone reaching out to you, so um so yeah that's kind of that's my business model right now um and yeah so that's kind of where i'm at with everything until i decide when to try to scale back up again yeah mike hey michael we closed that hoover one right this week yep we closed that hoover one this week that's our second hazel parking deal we've done which is awesome nice. same seller too so oh, that's oh. that's great yep did you get did you get a chance to call her back and see? no dude i didn't hear from her today i i didn't call her back to be honest with you i know i texted her yesterday after the the closing she i didn't hear back from her again so um about spending their money right yeah she probably took a big vacation after mm -hmm. so. yep yep hey uh eddie i um james it looks like he's gonna take my offer oh like, sweet the guy in So I'm going to meet him tomorrow. He's got a house across the street. I might buy them both. Okay. And I already got it sold. That guy already walked through it. Mm. So. Yeah, I'll I'll shoot those that guy over there with the three over in the Dearborn area. I'll I got that in my office. So I'll I'll text that information to you tomorrow. Okay, cool. Cool. And cool. then the other last question I wanted to ask you, um are, are the share of sales back popping for the three counties? Yep. <laughs> oh, even Wayne. Wayne starts tomorrow. Sweet. Okay. Bring a lunch. Bring a lunch. It's going to be as crazy. <laughs> Why do you say this out of curiosity? My, I hear there's going to be like 300 houses going to auction tomorrow. Oh, oh wow. Okay. okay. And probably twice as many investors too, at least, huh? Is, is the building open or are they going to do it outside or something crazy or you don't know? I'm pretty sure it's going to, the building's going to be open, but I really don't know. I okay. can't, I can't see them going outside. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. I'm, I'm planning on buying one tomorrow. Well, here, here's what I'm doing. Um, so I know a house that's going to auction tomorrow. I already got the buyer. The buyer, um, he's going to bring the money, and I'm going to make a $5,000 assignment fee. Okay. But I don't make the 5000 until, you know, it's kind of a trust thing. I know the guy. I know he'll go come through. So until it's his, his house, because it could take six months, right? Right. But this particular house is vacant, so it'll it'll get shortened to 30 days. Right. Yeah, a lot of those investors, don't they? Um, some of the mother guys do it like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a house in Bagley. It's going to be a nice one. Hmm. But, um, yep, yep, yep. And what's up, John? Hey, hey, Mike. John was out there this weekend in White Lake, boiler room. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. <laughs> yeah, we got the boiler room going again this Saturday, Michael. Do you know that? Oh, right on. Yeah. But Saturday in the afternoon, I think and it's from, I got to look it up. <laughs> I don't want to deter from what you guys are talking about, but I was just curious, do you guys, how do you handle a situation where I got a, I got a, a, a relative that has a property, but it, and it's free and clear, but she doesn't want to, she wants to know what the value's worth. 
for the for the property before she go, uh, wants to do it, you know, sign off on a buyer agreement with me. Do I need to get, he has someone living there. So either I got to figure out a way to get an appraiser in there or is there another way around that? So what do you, you, you got a lead, right? No. No. Yeah. And I'm not going to have you today. Is it going to be a, um, a wholesale deal or an agent deal? Uh, it's going to be a wholesale deal. It's going to be okay. an investor needs to get involved on it. Okay. So the buyer wants to know what it's worth first? Yeah. Yeah. This is a relative of mine. So this is kind of like a personal thing. They all, they, they all right on it. So there's no lien in, in the taxes and everything is up to code with it. Okay. So it's a relative of yours. Uh, you're going to make a wholesale fee? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that uh, they get taken care of, you know, for doing doing some leg work for it. But I don't plan on trying to, you know, gouge anybody or anything like that. Well, why don't you text me the address and I could tell you, um, I'll know that, uh, I'm a, you know, I could tell you what I think, you know? Okay. That's cool. I can do that. I think what, you know, John, you got to explain to them is like, you know, they're interested in wanting to know what the value of the home is. So they want to know what the value of the home is, is going to be different than what you're going to be able to pay them for their property. Yep. Totally and, agree with you. Yeah. And so, I mean, at the end of the day, you really want to. The end user investor needs to have equity. You can't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because if he comes in and he's buying it at retail, it's, it, he ain't going to want to waste his time with that. He's going to want something that he can, he sees value in for himself as well at the very end. Right, exactly. 30%. Out of curiosity, John, what, what do you do? Um, I see the stuff to the um, the left of me, but what are those things? The equipment? Okay. Oh, this stuff right yeah. here. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I just do like a little podcast and... Um, uh, I, because I do engineering, I record a lot of my like, you know, things that I got to do at work. So that way, when the next person follows behind me, they can go to a YouTube video or watch a little video that I created for them. And they'll just know how the steps on how to configure a switch or put the router in place and stuff like that. So I do a lot of little videos like that. And, you know, it's just beneficial for the job and stuff like that. And then, you know, just other stuff doing you know things and my son he plays football so his idea of wanting to do like a little podcast and show his videos and him working out and stuff so he plays with it as well <laughs> okay cool cool appreciate it sweet yeah if you want to send me that address john maybe what? I'm, I'm actually going to send it to you in just a, a minute. I want to say I got you programmed in my phone. Yeah, John, what I was going to say is, you know, I try to push away from sellers as much as I can, right? I I present them, you know, multiple options as far as, well, why don't you just keep the property or why don't you just list it with a realtor? You know, you, you want to just fly out something like, hey, listen, I'm, I'm a lot of times not even the right buyer in these situations but let's explore these options to figure out what is the best option for you, you know? Right. And at the end of the day, um, you know, if it's someone that really is going to work out and, you know, for you as an investor, you're going to explore those other options of listing it or them keeping it. And you're going to come back to yourself being the only good option for them. Cause they're not going to want to list it because they don't want to deal with realtors and contingencies and, loans and all that well they don't want to keep it because of the repairs or because of the tenant in there and they're tired of being landlords mm -hmm. he goes okay so well what if you know what if i was to buy this property from you you know what would that do for you and then you start to educate them on hey this is why my offer has to be the way so right uh, all the options and then go from there okay. yeah and just you know push away from them because that makes people want to kind of come towards you so Yep. Yeah, you always gotta. It's always gotta be kind of, uh, you know, gotta be a little, uh, a little careful dealing with a. Uh, he says a family member, right? So, um, you know, transparency is always key in this business too. So. Yep. Yep.
Yeah, I'm not trying to take over you guys' show, but um, what time is that um sheriff sale um tomorrow? Eleven. Eleven. I thought so. Okay, thanks. Yep. Yep. No, Eddie, you're not taking over. I mean, this is open form, like like all week. So, um, all right. No. Um, I was trying to see. We've got kind of some new faces out in the world. I see Chris Martin. What's up, Chris? I see Khalif. What's up, Khalif? I see Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Um. I was looking at Miss. I, you're gonna have to help me pronounce your name. Is it Ardura? Did I get that? Did I nail it's that first? Uh, it's really Ardura, but everybody calls me Adora. Okay. Okay. Awesome, Ardura. Okay. Well, welcome. I hadn't seen you on this Zoom before. Um, how would you tell us a little bit about yourself and like what market you're in and kind of where you're at with with the uh, with real estate? Okay. So I was advised by. Um, another wholesaler to join this because I never heard of meet, meet up. Um, he's a wholesaler in New Jersey. <clears throat> so I was trying to find a title company. Well, first I'm a realtor in New York and I wanted to do buy and flip. And I wanted a coach because I didn't really know exactly how to really start buy and flip. So um, I found a coach on Facebook and I paid them 2500 and I joined their group and um, they told me I needed an LLC title company all this stuff so it was, it was hard for me to find a title company because one um, I, I can't really do wholesaling in New York because I'm a realtor and it's conflict because my company which is Keller Williams doesn't really allow it they said it's um uh, it's unethical because there's no wholesaling. We don't really need attorneys, so they need there needs to have there needs to be. This is an, an attorney state in New York. It's an attorney state, and also it needs to be whatever property I have needs to be put on MLS. So um, I figured, let me do it out of the state anyway, because I'd have to split my profits anyway, being that I'm under broker. So I found a title company in Jersey. And I figured out, let me do it in Jersey. And I was referred to by a mentor in Jersey as well. And he was the one that told me to go and meet, meet, meet up. So this is my first time I'm here. And um, yeah, so I wanted to get tips because I'm still doing the program. And I wanted to kind of get tips on uh, the market in Jersey because I really don't know Jersey. Um, I, I, I know they were telling me from the group like chats, I was seeing that South Jersey is less competitive than North Jersey. So I just wanted to see the best way to go about this because I wouldn't be able to drive to South Jersey. I can drive to North, but I just wanted to get tips on where, what, she, what is better to do. Um, I am not good at cold calling, but I, that, I don't mind doing the drive for dollars, but um, if the market's too saturated in North, well, I know every, everything's going to be competitive, but I was watching a YouTube of Stephen, man, I forgot this man's name, uh, Stephen Terry, Sean Terry. Sean Terry. Sean Terry. Yeah, Sean Terry. And he was basically saying how the market um, come July 31st, how there will be more foreclosures, just like, like a cutoff of something, basically it would be a lot of foreclosures. So I figured that would be like a perfect time for me to get in, but I just wanna make sure of the market period in New Jersey, since I'm gonna be focusing there because I was told to focus on one state, but then focus, dive into one like um, town. So I wasn't sure where mm -hmm. to like start at. So that's where I'm at. Gotcha, well, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I don't know if anyone in this group will be familiar with the New Jersey market, but I will say this. No matter what market you're going to go into, you're going to want to start networking with people local in that market, right? And one of the best ways to do that is Facebook. You know, joining these real estate meetup or real estate investor Facebook groups, you know, real estate investor New Jersey group or real estate investing, you know, South New Jersey group. Um, I would join as many of those groups as possible and network with guys that are, at, or, you know, uh, people that are in those areas, you know, and networking with them and, uh, you know, squatting up because we're, we're big believers here in this group on squatting up 
and you'll be able to reach out to people and they'll be able to help you understand, you know, what the market's like and, um, you know, what's a good deal, what's a bad deal. Um, and I would use your, uh, you know, your connections, you know, you being a licensed realtor, right? Um, you know, re reaching out to other realtors in New Jersey, you know, getting some of their feedback. Hey, like, what's the market like here? What's the market like there? I'm looking to come in as an investor. Like, where would you recommend, you know, certain, you know, towns or cities I would go to, you know? Um, so yeah, I would, I would start there, um, and just get, you know, get familiar with some local people in that area, you know? Um, and then you'd be able to have boots on the ground and, um, you know, like I said, being able to squat up if you need buyers and such. So, um, yeah, you could also like go to auction.com. It's free. You could, um, type in New Jersey and, um, you could see what is going to foreclosure. Like you see, this is a foreclosure in person um, in September 22nd. So you could call this one now because they're not in foreclosure yet. It's supposed to go September 22nd and they might be motivated to sell the property, okay? So you can see a bunch of these, I don't know what area north or, or um, what the parts you're talking about, but this will tell you like where they're at and you can see these are, this is going August 10th. Um, the resale value doesn't mean anything. The opening bid, it says $100. Okay, I don't know if that's common in New Jersey. If all of the opening bids is 100 and they go up from there, I'm not familiar with the auctions, um, but it says it's a foreclosure in person. So you got to call the county and find out maybe where it's at. Or you try to reach the homeowners and and try to like this one says it's a hot one, and it's um, you could see if you could come in there and get you know buy it from you know find out how far they behind they're behind on what they what they owe and things like that. That's just um, an option, you know, one way you could do it. Yeah. So. I would, uh, like I said, just definitely start networking. You re resources like that, foreclose, uh, auction .com. Um, Especially like you said, coming up July 31st, uh, the moratorium is going to be lifted. So people are going to start getting nervous, you know? So people like that, that properties are on auction.com and they're just waiting now for the date, you know, are definitely going to be a bit more motivated than they were before. So, um, and Another option, if you're going to, if you want to do fix and flips, maybe find someone that might have some, uh, you might have experience and do you have experience doing fix and flips? Me? No, I, I, I wanted to do fix and flips that I was told because to build up my portfolio so I don't have to get hard money loan. I don't have to get any hard money right now that I should. Well, it'll be easier for me to get hard money loan if I start by doing wholesale so I could build my portfolio. I was told. So I would, I would wholesale. Got it. Got it. And then later on, I'll do fix and flip. For sure. For sure. That but I sense. thought that this was a New Jersey. It said uh, New Jersey. Um, forgot what the link said, but it it said that this group was in New Jersey. So that's why. Got you. I'm uh, sorry. We didn't post it. Someone else might have. But <laughs> so you got to talk to Mark about that. Yeah. There's a guy. He, he likes to blast this group out all, all over Kingdom Come. And so we get people in here. Um, but I mean, needless to say, you'll still like go back on meetup.com, join Facebook groups, uh, call local realtors, you know, that's all great strategies to uh, get familiar with a, um, with a virtual market, like what you're doing. Um, you just want to get your name out there and network with people. Um, so you think it's best for me to join, like actually go to groups, like go to like meetups? Uh, Facebook, you can start with Facebook groups, you know, if, uh, you know, if you're able to go in in-person meetups, you know, that's great if you're able to make those, but you could just start with Facebook groups, like real estate investor, New Jersey, real estate investing group, right. Um, or North or South or East or West, you know, any of those groups, I'm sure there's plenty of them out there. Join those groups and, uh, you know, look at, you know, some active posts, you know, type in wholesaler, 
um, and look at, you know, wholesalers posting in those groups um, or, you know, type in cash buyers and look for cash buyers dropping their emails on the comments, message those guys, say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm new to this market. I want to uh, just network a bit, get my name out there, so, like see what you're interested in buying, where you like to buy, you know, criteria, things like that. Um, and then again, reaching out to local realtors as well. Um, whatever you said, you're with Keller Williams, right? Um, reach out to the branch out there, right? Network with some realtors in that local market and, you know, get an idea of what the market's like, where they would recommend, you know, um, an investor like yourself go and ask them, hey, do you have any investment properties? You know, um, and uh, so those are some, those are some great ways to just, and that's like free ways, right? To get into a market and get an understanding um, of what's going on there. So, um, yeah, best of luck. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I became a licensed realtor myself this last month, but fortunately I'm with a really investor friendly brokerage who doesn't care about the, all the wholesale deals and stuff. But yes, yeah, so these big brokerages like Keller Williams or EXP, they're not going to let you, um, not going to let you wholesale. Well, it sounds like they'll let you wholesale. You just can't wholesale in your state that you're licensed in. So I guess. Yeah, they, they think it's unethical. So they're not letting me. So, I mean, I might not even deal with them. Like if I'm making more money with wholesaling, I might just even, I, I won't even need it really if I'm, you know, depending on how much money I'm making, but um, right. yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I probably would leave and go to another brokerage that will accept me to, you know, branch off and be um, yeah. um, independent. So, um, yeah, definitely something to look into. And like, you know, that's the, you were mentioning about growing your portfolio and potentially doing fix and flips. That's what's so powerful about wholesaling, right? Is it'll allow you to get to the deals first and you might start off wholesaling and, you know, raising capital. And then once you decide to go down those other pathways, like, you still continue to wholesale and do the same things that you would do to get a wholesale deal. Um, and it'll still allow you to get those discounted properties. And then you get, you know, first come first serve, you get to decide what you want to do. Do you want to wholesale? Do you want to keep it in fix and flip? Do you want to buy and hold? So yeah, that's the power of doing it. So you're definitely uh, heading in the right direction. So. I, have, I have a question. Um, so a friend of mine is basically he's, he bought, I don't know how to explain it correctly, but he has a property that he bought in Alabama. He didn't buy it. He bought the taxes on it. He paid off the taxes. The person mm -hmm. couldn't pay them off. So now he's a silent, he's a silent deed. He's on the silent deed. And now the person who owns the house wants to buy it back, wants to basically buy the taxes back. He paid, I, I think he paid the forgot who he paid, but um, is it the town? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, if he holds it, if the guy didn't ask him, if he holds it for three years, like if the, the owner of the house didn't ask him, didn't pay for the taxes or didn't do anything um, for three years, he gets to keep the house or something like that. But now the owner wants to pay him back, like pay back the tax. And once, you know, him to give it back the house back so he wants he the owner now says he'll give him if you give me fifteen thousand, i will let you keep the house and the house is worth only like twenty eight thousand, but it's a distressed property so i wanted to know what can he my friend do can he like pay him the money and it make money off of it or something? talk to an attorney <laughs> that's what i would say that's kind of going down the rabbit hole talk to an attorney i uh it sounds like to me he bought the property and you from the taxes are owed and you get a tax certificate deed um and once you have that the the original owner of the property can still claim the property and for your friend to officially own the property they have to go through like a quiet title process. And now that this, the original owner is interested in it, I don't really know how that would, you know, I would say for your friend to talk to an attorney. Is it in Birmingham, Alabama, by chance? I forgot where, uh, okay. it's, no, it's not in Birmingham. Okay, I was about to say, I know a good attorney there who's really, uh, really active and works with investors and stuff like that. But yeah, I would say talk to an attorney because it's going to just change state to state and so. 
um, yeah, but that's that's a doozy. So it actually is in Birmingham. It's in Heflin Ave, Birmingham. Yeah. Cool. Well, I was just asking because that's where I'm from. So I just had to shout out Birmingham, Alabama, on the 205. So, but um, here I'll drop a uh, drop a name in the chat. His name is Jeff Palmer. Uh, just Google him. Uh, he's an Alabama attorney. And I would tell your friend to call him immediately and figure out his options and how to navigate that. Because, man, I'm not sure. Not sure. There'll be good. There'll be a really good learning experience for you and him. So, um, so well, good. Again, thank you for joining us, Adjur. Um, what's some other new faces on here? Um, I've seen Alex Mezzo. What's up, Alex? Guy. Hey, how are you? Sorry. No, you're good, um, man. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm actually a college student right now, 20 years old. So uh, just trying cool. to network, uh, listen in, um, get a feel for uh, the whole wholesaling, learn more about it. Cool. What? Uh, where are you? Where are you at, Alex? Uh, Springfield. Gotcha. Yep, That's in Michigan. Westfield. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, what got you interested in wholesaling? Like, how'd you hear about it? Uh, my parents are uh, in the real estate, and um, what happened was is that I was uh, just did I lose you there, or can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, because I just got a phone call real quick. Oh my, I keep getting a phone call. Um, but anyway, so my parents are uh, realtors and uh, just, you know, real estate's the number one thing. They've been teaching me from uh, age like 16 and I've always been interested in it. And uh, I, I read more about it as I uh, grew older in high school and um, I uh, wanted a network and I actually met with uh, another realtor and I sat down with him and he showed me this, this uh, app called meetup and I, I downloaded it and uh now i'm just trying out a few things a few meetup groups uh and just listening in and uh take notes so totally yeah well welcome again um yeah Thank you. just like i was um you know meetup.com is great join local facebook groups you know find people in your local market network with them let people know what you're doing try to add value to whoever you know you talk to um, right. you know you can always start you know if you wanted to just start like bird dogging for an investor uh, that's right. a great way you can just go out and just collect the finder's fee for, for helping somebody out um you, do you think you're gonna go the realtor route like your parents or uh i don't know yet um i'd have to work my way up uh but i'm not totally sure yet i might i might go that route so i'd have to see gotcha gotcha i mean I don't know. I guess I'm a believer nowadays that like it never hurts to get your license. I don't really think right. it hurts. Um, and I think you only would, you know, I mean, the MLS access alone is about just worth getting the license. Um, right. You got your parents and stuff. So I'm sure you can, you know, use theirs. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, um, it's going to probably come a time where you're going to have to be licensed to uh, wholesale anyway. So yeah, um, absolutely. definitely want to, yeah, definitely want to be a bad idea, especially, um, being young go ahead and get in get into it but yeah man just you know a bit like i said big believer in here squad up network with people in your local market um yep. 